Hello, and it is time again for yet another long, long overdue video blog. I'll be talking about all of these lovely locations here, but I'm going to try to race through them. Don't have a lot of time. Trying to get a quick video up, fast and dirty, hence the really poorly done green screen. I'm heading to Chiller. I'll be out in New Jersey with Olivia and Miriam Davo. So if you can, definitely come on out and say hi to us. Um, I'll be with the really pretty girls on either side. I want to start out by uh, giving a big thanks to Lisa Driscoll, who just picked up the, uh, the collector's package off the website. This is my book, Voices from the Chicago Grave. It covers a ton of ghost stories of Chicago, checking in at over 300 pages of awesome. You can get on the website, but if you buy the collector's package, it comes with the original book. Also called Voices from the Chicago Grave, came out about a decade earlier, and really is just a collector's item. I don't sell this alone anymore hence making it the collector's package. Also, in the collector's package, it comes with a DVD. The documentary that I that got me started doing all this back in 1999, really just me and some friends going to some of the scariest places in Chicago, some of the most famous ghost stories like Resurrection Mary and Bachelor's Grove Cemetery, and uh, we really get into the so-called Sunnybrook Asylum. But why should you just be buying stuff that's awesome? In addition to it being awesome, um, it, I can then go out and make videos for you guys with cool gadgets. Um, somebody was asking me recently, um, you know, what I like to use when I go out there and ghost hunt. I really do love the full spectrum video camera that makes cool sounds. And it, uh, you know, shoots all visible light. Infrared and ultraviolet rays are picked up on this stuff that the human eyes can't see. And of course, we've got our good old trusty EMF detector. Lisa was also asking if I have a group, a ghost hunting group. I do not. I still try to stay very involved with Chicago activities. I spoke at the Chicago Ghost Conference that Ursula Bielski puts on. When I am in town, I like to do stuff with the Wisconsin Paranormal Investigators. They, of course, cover Wisconsin, but also go through the Chicagoland area as well. I do have a big online presence. Find me here at YouTube. I just got an Instagraphics. So I think you just search my name, Scott Marcus, with a K. The book has a Facebook group, and of course, my website, slimpictures.com. Magenta? She saw the video I did about the Illinois Beach Resort in Zion and asked if I've been to any other Chicago sites. Welcome, I've got books full of them. I haven't been doing as many videos about Chicago ghosts here on YouTube just because I'm in California now, but I do have some stuff coming up, even in this very video. A lot of you saw the video I did up in Napa Valley uh, with my good friend Max Tim. I teased at the end of it some things that I want to know more about. Uh, one is a place kind of nicknamed Children of the Go Good Serpent Orphanage, which was Children of the Good Serpent, of course. And this story is right out of a horror movie, and it's actually quite sad that it's true. It was an orphanage for mentally or physically um, challenged children, and this is in the early uh, 1900s, and you know society just wasn't equipped to handle them, so they kind of got shipped off. Included in this group was uh, the children of the Appalachian experiment. It had to do with the government allowed, initiated radiation poisoning of, of children just to see how they would handle it. And so, well, they didn't handle it well, nobody would, so they got sent to this orphanage. Horrendous uh, conditions that would force these kids to, at night, sneak out to forge for food. And mysteriously, the entire building burned down, bringing a tragic end to this already horrible story. Now, since then, uh, ghosts of these children have been seen along Highway 80. This is up towards the Bay Area. Specifically, there's a place called Old Borges Ranch, where a lot of these uh, uh, ghost children are seen today. Now, I have not investigated this area, but it is also just kind of fascinating that there's any remnants left behind. And I don't think they should be forgotten, because that's, in essence, why these kids were sent there in the first place, to be forgotten. And the fact that their ghosts are still seen is making it so that they can't be forgotten even long after death. Uh, there's some beauty in that, actually. I want to go take a look myself, and if you have any interesting stories yourselves, any tips on where to go, who to talk to, um, but of course, if you have any encounters of your own, uh, I would love, love to hear about that. Another place to keep an eye on that I'm kind of tabbing to be the next super haunted, haunted location though it's not known as one yet, it has to be a Napa State Hospital, which is a mental health facility. 135 years old, it's the third largest uh, hospital in California. The funding is getting cut more and more and more, and the hospital is being used basically as an extension of the criminal court system. Even in just the last couple of days, in April 13th and 14th, two 
really violent criminals have been sent there. Currently, 86% of the hospital population were people that were sentenced there. It's just this case of hospitals serving as jails, except they're not equipped to do that. There have been a lot of very violent crimes there, including murders, just in the last couple of years. Hopefully they get a lot of funding, and they're able to renovate and fully staff it, and things will be better there. Sadly, this is primed to become one of the next very, very big haunted hotspots. Linda Vista Hospital is one of those places that's a super, super intensely haunted place in California. It's a hospital that was closed down because of poor funding, bad conditions, on and on and on. I was just there last weekend. The main building is being converted into retirement housing next year. The mental health building, which is the place where some of the most extreme paranormal activity, including physical attacks, so there's a lot of cases of uh, people being scratched to the point of bleeding by uh, invisible hands. That building will remain untouched as of now, but that's kind of up in the air what will happen after 2013. I did a film shoot, found this really cool location. There's no ghost stories associated with it, but I love it. Uh, it's Mountain View Mausoleum and Cemetery out in Altadena. It's primarily a Masonic mausoleum, so it's really fun just to kind of walk around and find all the symbols and all the, all the imagery. It kind of makes you feel like you're in Da Vinci Code or on Decoded and you're gonna find the, the true Declaration of Independence that has all the secrets of the planet in it or something. But my EMF detector started kind of bouncing around a bit and um, it, it was doing it unpredictably. So it wasn't a certain location that I could then go back to and it would react the same way. It was almost like we were passing through these energy fields that were wafting around. That was way high. Whoa! Start to get into the red. If anyone's here with me, just touch this plastic device in my left hand. It'll just let me know that you're here. That's wild. Look at that. Some form of measurable energy was coming in contact with it. Just recently I had it to Tombstone for the first time ever. Very cool location. I couldn't help but go through the Birdcage Theater. The Birdcage claims to be one of the most haunted buildings in America and I could see why from its amazing history. Uh, there's a million places for you to go to find that history and also find the whole history of all the ghost stories associated with it, so I won't go over that with you now. But I will use this forum to ask you if you have any ghost stories about Tombstone, Arizona or the Birdcage Theater go ahead and submit them here. I had one of the coolest encounters ever uh, with the full spectrum video camera. Now, unfortunately I didn't get anything visual on, on camera here, but super duper talented and awesome Hollywood actress uh, and uh, burgeoning ghost adventurer, uh, Dominique Swain and I were just at a house and we decided to do a, an EVP session. There was no story about the house being haunted whatsoever. The session lasted about 20-25 minutes and then we kind of stopped shut off our tape recorders, and we're just sitting talking. But just for the hell of it, I turned my video camera back on, and I started to film Dominique as we were chatting, and moments after turning on the camera, we... Whoa. What was that? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. It was so instant that we weren't really able to react. We looked around, we couldn't find any source for the sound in, in the room we were in or in the house in general. We did have a couple of dogs with us that started trembling at the instant it happened. I have a whole lot of full spectrum video that I've shot over the last six months that I haven't had a chance to look at yet. A lot of it was shot in Chicago in October. We looked at the house on Rainbow Road, which there's a huge update on, uh, the gate in Libertyville. We went to Graceland Cemetery, the Sunnybrook Asylum, Hull House, and uh, just recently I was at the Illinois Beach Resort up in Zion, Illinois. It's like having a Christmas present and for whatever reason you've waited six months to open it. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing that and, uh, and sharing any findings with you. Thanks for watching. I hope you are able to share some ghost stories or tell me some places I should check out. I'd love to hear about anything. Illinois, Arizona, California, anywhere in the world. And if you're new to the site, I'm going to post a couple of links to some of my favorite videos that I've shot at the very end. And again, thanks for watching and see you next time.